All right, so in the past few videos, we have introduced the concept of K-maps and done a few examples. Now I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about some of the theory of K-maps so that you understand exactly what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do in a K-map. A group of terms in a K-map is called an implicant. Okay, now these are fancy words. I'm not entirely sure why we use these, but this is the terminology that we're going to use. So an implicant is a group of ones on a map. An implicant has to be a power of two. So you could have an implicant of one term, one min term, two min terms, four min terms, eight min terms, or 16 min terms. Remember, each one on the map corresponds to a min term in your truth table, and you can build them in groups that are a power of two. And they have to be in a rectangular shape. You can't have like an L, a power of two, two here and four there. They have to be in a rectangular shape. And we can show some examples of terms that work, that simplify, and terms that don't. In the previous video, I showed you an example of why a three term didn't work, because the resulting simplified term of three min terms actually also includes that fourth min term, and so it doesn't correspond to those three. With those three, you'd have to do these two, and then those two. And I'll show you some examples of those. So an implicant is just a group of ones. A prime implicant is the name that we use for the largest possible group of ones. And if you look back to some of those previous videos, you could see that if you have a group of four in a cluster, you could make a valid implement implicant with the top two and the bottom two, but the prime implicant would include all four, as long as they are in a rectangle and they're in a power of two. An essential prime implicant then is a prime implicant that contains at least one term not covered by another prime implicant. So that means that not only is it the biggest term you can make, but also it has to be there because it includes at least one min term that isn't covered any other way. Remember, we can overlap the terms. That's our idempotent rule that allows us to take a min term or any term and duplicate it because x or x equals x. And so we can do all sorts of overlapping that we want to. Uh, which means that there's the potential for being a bit wasteful. If we overlap too much, we might have terms we don't need. So an essential prime implicant is an implicant that contains at least one term that isn't covered by any other prime implicant. Uh, this is important to recognize these three different kinds of things. Uh, well, there's sort of three specifications, right? An implicant is any group of one. Sorry, I'll start again. An implicant is a one, a, a group of ones. That's right. An implicant is any group of ones. A prime implicant is the biggest group of ones, and an essential prime implicant is the biggest group of ones that has to be in your solution, because there's at least one one that's not covered some other way. So I'll show you some examples of this, and then you'll get the feel for that. Given this example, this is a Carnot map that has ones here, 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 and here. This big group and this big group are essential prime implicants, because they cover at least one one that can't be covered some other way, and they are as big as they can be. This orange group is a non-prime implicant because it is completely incorpor incorporated in a potentially larger group, right? If you provided that orange group in a solution, I would say that's wrong because if you make the blue group instead, you can get all four of these ones. And remember, bigger groups mean smaller terms means a simpler solution. This one here it is, uh, it's a, prime implicant, uh, because it is as big as it can be, there's no way to make this one bigger, but it covers ones that are both covered by some other group. This one is covered by this group, this one is covered by this group, and that means we don't need this. It's non-essential. This one, one of these terms is covered by a group of at least the same size, uh, and that means that this one is essential. Here, all of these ones are in a group that can't be covered by another group of that same size any other way. So all of these ones contribute to this group being uh, essential. Uh, but only you only need one min term in a group to make that term essential. So there's an example. Here's another example. This is a Carnot map that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight min terms. And the question is, how do you collect all of the essential prime implicants. Well, which are the essential prime implicants? And we can do this example ourselves. Uh, we'll do it this way. So we could make a group of two here if we wanted to, but that's not big enough because right beside it is a group of four. So that group of four is going to be prime. 
We can't make a group of eight with, the, with these ones. It's got to be this group of four. What else? Here's another group of four, right? Again, we could use this group of two, but it's not big enough. That's an implicant, but it's not prime. So you have to make it as big as you can make it in order to make it prime. So the prime implicants are here and here, but there's also another prime implicant right here. These four ones can be covered by a group of four, and you can see these ones are square, this one's a rectangle. Those are all groups of four. One, two, three, four. And so all three of these are prime, but only two of them are essential because here is a term that is not covered by any other four term. Here is a term that is not covered by any other four term. But all of these terms, I'll do them red so you can see, all of these terms are covered by some other four term. And so this rectangular term is not needed. It's prime, but it's not essential. I hope that distinction makes sense, and we will uh, clarify that in more detail as we go on. But this gives you a sense of what we can do and what we can't do. The groups have to be a power of two, they have to be rectangular, and they have to, to be included in the solution. They have to be as big as they can be, and they have to contain at least a one, at least one one that isn't covered any other way. So let's look at uh, our complete procedure then for doing a Carnot map. First, you're going to draw out the map, and there's a template that I'm going to give you uh, for drawing these things out in Excel. Um, you can draw this out using a drawing program. You can do it by hand if you want to. Uh, then you're going to put a 1 for each min term in the function, and you're going to fill the rest with zeros, although as you've seen, if we leave it blank, we're going to assume that it's 0, and that's going to be okay. Then you're going to identify all of the essential prime implicants. This means you're going to look through every term and you're going to say, this one's big, this one's bigger. Okay, that's as big as we're going to get. And you're going to find out um, that you're going to cover most of the ones with essential prime implicants. These are terms that are as big as they can be, and they contain at least one one that isn't covered some other way. Now you'll notice in this example, there's one uh, min term that is not covered. Uh, this min term here, I'll use a uh, purple here. This min term here is not covered yet. And that's because there is no essential prime implicant that covers it. There's a choice you have to make. You could cover it this way, or you could cover it this way. Those two terms are both prime implicants, but neither is essential because both of them only contain ones that are covered by some other potential prime term. That means that in this case, you have to choose. You can use this term, and that would be a completely valid solution, or you can choose this term, and that would also be a completely valid solution. And the result of this um, observation is that there are sometimes more than one valid solution to a given simplification problem. That's cool. That's kind of neat. And there are some good reasons, depending on your implementation, to pick one instead of the other, um, or sometimes to pick both. Uh, but in general, for the work we're doing here, you can just pick one and you can say, that's the one I'm going to use and it's fine. And when I give you the solutions to a problem like this that have um, at least one min term that is not covered by any essential prime implicant, I'll give you both solutions so you can see which one we're looking at. And then you can see here, the final step is to choose a prime implicant to cover any term that is not covered by an essential prime implicant. So that's going to be your complete process. And again, there are two valid solutions to this example. BC, that's this brown, uh, blue one. A prime C prime D is this one. A prime BD is that one. Both of these are valid solutions. Uh, all of your solutions have to include the essential prime implicants. That's the big blue one. That's this green one, B prime C prime D. And the purple one, A, C, D prime. But you can make a choice here. So there's a few more examples in the notes. I'm going to breeze past these and encourage you to try these yourself. And again, I'm just giving you a list of a sum of min terms. This is a truth table. And you have to draw out the K-map. You have to decide how big the K-map is. This one's only three. Decide how big the K-map is. Draw out the K-map. Choose the essential prime implicants. Make any choices that aren't covered by essential prime implicants. And then draw out the function. There's an example. There's two more examples. So try all of these things.